If you have your Bibles, would you please turn your Bibles to Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the book of Isaiah, chapter 10. And we're going to see what the Lord has to say to us this afternoon, the 10th chapter of Isaiah. And I'm going to be reading verses 24 through 27. That's Isaiah chapter 10, beginning at verse 24 and ending at verse 27. Here beginneth the reading of God's word. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass, tell somebody it's getting ready to happen, in that day, tell somebody today, today, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. Tell somebody my neck. My neck. And the yoke shall be, tell somebody shall be, shall be. destroyed. Tell somebody destroyed because of what? The anointing. Come on and put your hands together for the anointing. Amen. And the subject today for your consideration is, I'm too fat for this yoke. I'm too fat for this yoke. Tell somebody I'm too fat for this yoke. Now in order to appreciate the text, let me just share with you a little background as to the author and the historical background to the text. Can't really appreciate what's happening and what will happen to you if you don't know what happened in Isaiah's day. Isaiah was one of those classical prophets of the Old Testament. He ranks high along with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. He was the son of Amos, came from a very renowned family raised in the royal court and his ministry took him among the greatest kings such as King Hezekiah. His ministry reigned for a number of years and ended in the reign of Manasseh which the history book says who killed him and assassinated him. During his reign one of the greatest enemies of Israel was the nation of Assyria. Assyria at that time was known because they had a fantastic army. They had the latest weaponry. The king of Assyria had trained soldiers. If you know anything about the history of Israel, you know that Israel did not have a reputation of being a mighty warrior except under the administration of David. So the Assyrian threatened the nation of Israel. And the Bible tells us that they threatened the nation of Israel with their reputation. They were the superpower of the time. Now there's no doubt in our lives that we live under great oppression. You may say, McCullough, you're not talking to me because I'm loose and free. But I'm here to tell you as a nation of people, we live under oppression. We're oppressed politically. We're oppressed economically. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, many of us would not be in here today. Many of you are oppressed in your homes. Many of you are oppressed by your spouses. Many of you may live alone, but you're oppressed by your own fears, your own past, your own mistakes, and your own failures. And then when you leave your house, you're oppressed on the job dead-end job, limited income, somebody who expects you to work for nothing. And after you get through paying the bills, you need money to borrow to take you through the next week. Oppression is a part of the enemy's plan. It is a tool that the enemy used to keep you down. 
What is the aim and purpose of oppression? To keep you down, to keep you defeated, to keep with you with your shoulders humped to keep you with a posture as if there is no hope and there's no expectation. Well, the Assyrians decided to oppress the enemy, oppress Israel rather. We know that they sent letters. Remember, Sennacherib sent letter to Hezekiah and tell Hezekiah, I'm getting ready to whip you. You can't whip me, I've got the baddest army. And even though your God got rid of the Egyptians, and even though your God whipped the Midianites under Gideon's leadership, but we've got a new day. We've got new techniques, and we live in a time of high technology. There are new means of oppression. In the past, there was active and blatant slavery. Now, slavery comes under the form of pornography, high-tech sex via computer. It has come in all kinds of creative means. By the 21st century, you will be oppressed by things that you don't even understand. Don't even know that right now they're putting satellites in the air in order to invade your privacy. There's no more privacy anymore. Somebody can peep through your window and see everything that you do. They've got dossiers on you that goes all the way back to before you were born. Who is your mama? Who is your daddy? The color of your eyes, the color of your skin, how much you got in your bank account try to hide it from somebody somebody already can call one telephone call and all your business will be in the street if the FBI or the CIA ever decide to come after you you ain't got no business oh come on oppression is everywhere they've got bugs everywhere they can stick a bug in your telephone and listen to all your telephone call and you don't even know what's going on this country this nation this world has ways and means of controlling people it's a spirit of control that the enemy brought out of heaven with him he doesn't want to bless you he wants to control you he doesn't want you to be free he wants you to be oppressed he you think he likes the fact that you are free in the Holy Ghost you think he likes the fact that you can walk around here and lift up holy hands and give God the glory he's mad right now that's why every one of you who sat down when it was praise time you gave him more liberty to mess up your mind that's why every chance you get you to let him know I'm free and you can't do nothing about it try all the tricks in the world and I'm gonna keep my freedom oh come on tell somebody I'm too fat for this I'm too fat for this I'm too fat for it. not only the Assyrians would come against Israel but the Assyrians would be defeated but the Babylonians if you know your history Nebuchadnezzar Isaiah also was lived in, in the time when Nebuchadnezzar would ride through Jerusalem, tear down Solomon's temple, crush the lives of people, and take the young men into Babylon. So Isaiah prophesied at a time when enemies were rampant against the nation of Israel, especially Judah. During Isaiah's time, Judah's safety, we know, was threatened, and Isaiah had to prophesy and warn them because of your hypocrisy, because of your idolatry, because of your failure to worship God and God alone, because you want to worship a little God and a little Baal, because you want to worship a little God and a little 1-900 psychic, because you want to worship a little God and a little tarot card reading, because you want to worship a little God and a little high priestess reading. Oh, come on here. I know you all ain't going to help me there. Ah, because you want to worship God and we're, we're, we're with a little calling and asking for counseling from somebody who hates your God and who doesn't want your God. God says, I'm coming after you. I, 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 I can forgive you for the fornication and adultery but when you start mixing me up with them strange gods you're in trouble I, I can bring you out of the mess that you're living in you're living with another woman's husband I can deliver you and bring you out but when you start going to them strange gods you and I got a problem for you shall worship him oh I wish I had a church that believe it and worship him alone there is no other God beside him he is the only wise God oh I need somebody to help me tell the devil that he is the only wise God come on I got to hear it now I got to hear it come on and lift your voices if you believe he is the only hallelujah I said he's the only oh come on Christians help me right now I said, he's the only wise God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I'm almost finished. 
the, the Isaiah is broken up into two parts. Many of you who go to seminaries or Bible college, they call it first and second Isaiah. We're not going to go into whether he wrote all the book. That's for you scholars who want to nitpick. But we know that there are two major sections to this book. The first book is a warning and exhortation against judgment. The second portion of the book, which covers 40 through 66, talks about redemption. And that's how God works. He warns you. He gives you indication. You don't hear, you get messed up, you get jacked up. After you get jacked up and he puts you in a corner, you repent, he gives you a second chance. Oh, that's just the way, you don't need to dress it up, that's just the way he works. You mess up, he warned you. He warned you it would be a mess. He told you if you keep doing it, it would embarrass you. He told you if you keep going there, you would lose, almost lose your mind. And then when you call on him, he gives you a second chance and tell you, don't go back there no more. Tell somebody, don't go back there no more. Don't go back there no more. The second part of the, of the, book, of, or, or the book of Isaiah, starting from chapter 40, he talks about redemption. God is a God of mercy. Some of us take advantage of that, but it is true. When you call him, he will answer. He will give you chances, not just second chance, but he'll give you chances. So the second part, Isaiah prophesied comfort. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Even though you're in trouble, but your warfare shall be accomplished. God is getting ready to do something mighty and powerful. And the Bible says that a virgin shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. So Isaiah saw deliverance and healing coming in the form of a Messiah. He is known as really a New Testament prophet. He saw more about Jesus than any other prophet. And his name shall be called Wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father and the prince of peace he saw the consolation of Israel he saw the healer coming he saw the Messiah coming and he saw his crucifixion and he was wounded for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed he also saw him coming up again and it seemed as if God had turned his head and forgot about Jesus oh, Oh, but he gave him a chance buried in a rich man tomb but he rose triumphantly on the third day this prophet saw a whole lot he saw judgment but he also saw mercy and in this particular section it talks about the Assyrian the Assyrian Empire how after a while tell somebody after a while oppression can only last but a certain time I don't care how bad you're going through things there is a limit to what the devil can do he has to have permission to start and he's given a limit when to stop he has to have permission when to touch but he's also told when to take his hands off I don't care what the devil tells you he is not in charge there is a higher power and his name is not Allah and his name is not Buddha and his name is not the force his name is Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah and the Holy One of Israel tell somebody he's in charge he's in charge he's in charge this particular passage this this 10th chapter verses 24 through 27 describes the fact that a Syrian army would be crushed not just removed but crushed not just dispossessed but crushed not just kindly asked to leave but destroyed God would turn the judgment. Now, now the irony of this whole prophecy and the prophetic book of Isaiah is that God used the Assyrian army to check Israel. He used Assyria to oppress Israel because Israel wanted to act like them. And the people that you want to act like, God uses them to mess with you. <laughs> the unsafe folk that you want to hang out with, God uses them to turn on you. 
The unsaved man that you want to marry uses him to beat you one day and beat you the next day and beat you the other day. The unsaved girls that you want to party with, they'll turn around and lie on you and put your business in the street. You want to act like them? God said, go ahead, go ahead. But when I get through using them to mess with you, you'll find out I'm the best friend you have ever had. Oh, come on here, come on. God allows us to live out our madness. He gives you room to discover how good it is to be with Jesus. Ah, he lets you go out there and get your fill. Ask the prodigal son. He allows you to go out there and get all messed up until you find out it is better with God than with anybody else. Isn't that what Moses said? I would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness just for a season. Oh, it looks good for a while. It seems good for a while. You got friends, you got money, you got clothes. You start meeting new people and going new places. But after a while, those same people who used to be your friend turn around and stab you in the back the same people that you put before God anything you put before God anybody you put before God God will use them to whip you going and coming I suggest that you lay your idols down today I suggest that you give up everything and said God you are the center of my joy oh come on I wish I had somebody that wants to make him the center This is not, this is not a game, ladies. <laughs> this ain't no party in New Orleans. Come on here. This ain't no Mardi Gras under the dome. This is being in the purpose and the will of God. It is coming here and learning how to say, God, you're first, you're first, you're first. Everybody else got to be second, third. But God, you are the center, you're the center. You're everything that I need. Without you, I'm absolutely nothing. Oh, I need some obedient spirits. I need somebody to help me praise him. Come on and put your hands together if he is first. Hallelujah got to be first tell your neighbor he got to be first got to be first got to be first the Assyrians became the enemy the very ones that they wanted to act like the very gods that they wanted to serve God allowed the nation now you must understand Old Testament concept or language when an enemy attacks you and whips you it is also concluded that they have whipped your God. So when the Assyrians attacked Israel and thought they were getting ready to win, they were bragging, we're not only going to whip you, but if we whip you, we have also whipped your God. And they started to boast. So those of you who willingly volunteer to fight against God's people, God will use you. But don't you ever think that God ain't going to jack you up for volunteering. <laughs> if I were you, I would leave God's people alone. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how low down they are. God said, that's my child. That's my low down child. That's my messed up child. But that's my child. Oh, come on here. You're the apple of his eye. You're written in the palm of his hand. He'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Come on and give him a praise in the house. We don't understand. We fail to understand the mind of God. God knows that we need discipline. He knows that we get out of order every now and then just like your child, just like your cute little son, just like your straight A daughter. Every now and then as good as she is, you got to pull her in because she's getting ready to play the fool. And so God will use anything and anybody to keep you in line. Tell somebody in line. You want to get online, he want to put you in line, in line. Every now and then he's got to check you. And he uses anybody. He uses people who have envy against you. He uses people who hate you. 
He uses people who have ambivalence towards you. He uses people that don't like who you are and what you represent. They're available. They're easily available. If you tell them to talk about you, they'll talk about you because they want to talk about you anyway. But I suggest that you don't volunteer too quickly because the same God that jacked them up is the same God that's going to deliver them. The same God that had them in a corner is the same God that's going to bring them out. The same God that got his foot on them is the same God that's going to pick them up. Oh, come on and thank him. He is a God of justice, but he's also a God of mercy. That's why people can't understand. They can't understand how some of the worst people in the world can be so blessed. They can't understand some of the weakest Christians, how God can keep loving them and caring for them. Because God makes a commitment. He keeps a covenant. He brought you. He sought you. He chose you. He elected you. And even though you're struggling today, it doesn't mean you're going to be the same tomorrow. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Tell somebody, I am, I am. I don't care what you say. I am, I am, I am. You know all my mess, but I am, I am, I am. I'm defeated right now, but I am right where I sit. I am a child of the living God. I may not have it all together, but nobody can separate me. Who can separate me from the love of God? Come on and give him a praise. Come on, give it to him. Hallelujah. That is the marvels of his love. That is the mystery of his bowels of compassion. There is no limit to how much he loves you. There is no extent as to how far he'll go to keep you. My God, I don't care how far you go, he will do anything to come back after you. I don't care how low down you get, he'll reach all the way off. Or oh, some of you know he got to go all the way, all the way to pick us up. Tell somebody that's how much he loves me, that's how much he loves me. Don't you talk about me, you better not talk about me. That's how much he loves me. You better get your mouth off of me. That's how much he's gonna deliver me. You better not laugh at me. Ah, he's getting ready to bring me out. Come on and praise him, church. The Bible said that Syria, Assyria started to brag. Don't you ever boast or brag on the downfall of a saint. Don't you ever think that because he or she is messed up today, that that's the end of it. Don't you ever walk around and think that because somebody got caught or somebody messed up or somebody got in trouble that God will not give them a chance to come out of it. Don't you walk out of here and think that it's over. Tell somebody it's not over. It's not over. Ah, I may be all the way down, but the great God of heaven, the God that called me from my mama's belly, the God that chose me before the foundation of the world, he's coming after me. He's coming after me. He's getting ready to bring me out of this. Ah, come hell or high water, the God that I serve, he is able. Oh, I wish I had some help in here now. Come on and put your hands together and let me hear you say he's able, he's able. I said he's able, he's able, he's able. Come on, I don't care how bad it is today. You get ready to get your deliverance. He's able. Come on and praise him a little bit. He's able. The Bible says that the Assyrians started to boast. I'm going to whip you. I'm going to whip you and your God. I, I, I'm going to whip you because my army is better than the army that came after you at the Red Sea. My army is more sophisticated than the army that Gideon defeated against the Midianites. You may have a history, but it's over now. I'm coming against you and your children. I'm coming against you and your home. Even though God saved you and delivered you, ah, he can't stop what I'm getting ready to do to your house. Things are getting ready to get worse than they've ever gotten. And they started bragging. And God said, uh-uh, I might have used you for a little while, but now you're not only bragging against them, but now you're raising a question mark over my integrity. Come on here, I made a covenant 
with their father Abraham. I told their father Abraham that I'll keep him and that I'll bless him. Bless him when he gets up and bless him when he lies down. I made a contract with their daddy Abraham that I'll be his rear guard and his battle axe. I made a covenant with their daddy Abraham ah, that I'll go before them and make every crooked path straight. I made a covenant on Calvary that the blood of Jesus shall cover your house. Ah, when my son hung on the cross and shed his blood, ah, it was a contract from now until eternity. I don't care what comes against you, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against you, come on here, you shall condemn. Tell somebody, I'm getting ready to come out now. I'm getting ready to, oh, come on and put your hands together. Come on and praise it. No oppression. No more oppression. The Bible says they started to brag. And you know when you're in trouble, the enemy brags. Have you ever heard the enemy laugh at you? If you've never heard that, live another day. Come on, if you're a saint, do business with God. The more you do business with God, it's the more the devil laughs at you. Especially when you're down and out. You can almost hear him laughing. If you've never heard the devil laughing, then you're a blessed saint. But every now and then you hear him laughing. He and his cohorts. Not only the devil, but folk, folk, folk. Folk who are assigned to put you down and make you feel bad. Sometimes they laugh right in your face. You see them snickering at you, making you believe that God is not going to make a way. And that's when God gets angry. That's why when folk laugh at you, you ought to get happy. Because just when God get ready to deliver you. Come on here. Tell them laugh, honey. Come on, laugh, laugh. I want you to laugh. Go ahead. Come on and laugh some more. The more you laugh, is the more he gets mad. The more you laugh, is the more he's going to deliver me. Come on, tell your neighbor, laugh, honey. Laugh, laugh. I want you to laugh. Some of you are mad when folk laugh at you. Some of you are crazy. You get an attitude, you get defensive. Start putting up your fists. Go home and rejoice. When people start talking about you, go home and rejoice. The Bible says rejoice when men persecute you and revile you for yours, yours, yours. is the kingdom of heaven. So when people start laughing, say, go ahead, I'll help you, I'll help you. Come on, laugh some more. Come on. I want you to laugh. For if you laugh, God is getting ready to move. Come on and tell the devil, laugh, laugh, devil, laugh. When you laugh, God is going to move. When you laugh, God is going to bring me out. When you laugh, God is going to turn it around. I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to look at you. Because when you laugh, God is going to move by his power. The Assyrians started bragging. So when folks start bragging, if you were so saved, how come you don't have the house yet? And if you were so saved, how come your house is not delivered? And if you were so saved, how come your son is on crack? Oh, they're bragging. And we don't have to do all of that. And we don't go to church, yet our house is intact. And our children go to college. And we don't have no problems with our children. Tell them, go ahead and brag, honey. Go ahead and brag. I want you to brag. The more you brag, is the more my God's integrity has got to come forth. He's got to prove himself that he's a prayer answering God, that he's a delivering God. God, that he'll make a way out of nowhere. Go ahead and talk about your son, because my son is getting ready to get delivered. Go ahead and talk about my daughter, because God is getting ready to make a way out of nowhere. Come on, church. Come on and praise him. Now, I want you to go home now and start dealing with mockery persecution derision differently tell somebody i'm going to deal with it differently instead of getting mad i'm going to tell them go ahead talk it talk it talk it instead of going and getting an attitude i'm going to say go ahead i'm going to stand here and listen to you talking instead of rolling my eyes i'm going to look up to heaven and say hey god you hear this you hear this come on check it out check it out come on god you see this you see oh come on i wanted to go home and act differently tell somebody i know how to handle it now i know how to handle it yeah, 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 yo, 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 yo. Come on, and that die, so to the Shambaya back of a hundo. Come on and praise him just a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Come on and clap, 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 clap. Shambaya, my boss, come on, and that's a Hallelujah. 
somebody has been living in mockery and persecution god sent me here to tell you today is the day he's getting ready to make you have the last laugh tell somebody i'm gonna have the last laugh on this one i'm getting ready to laugh on this one Hallelujah. the bible said that the prophecy came tell somebody the word came just like the word is coming to you today not everybody is going to believe this but there is a remnant that's going to come out of this without a scratch not everybody in here today under the sound of my voice even want to hear this word but tell somebody i'm part of the remnant i'm part of the remnant i'm part of the remnant there is a small group tell somebody i'm in it i'm in it i'm in it my god Tell somebody it's me. She's talking to me. She's talking to me. She's talking. I'm gonna be part of this deliverance. 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 Oh, come on, church. Hey, I'm on shake. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, come on and praise him. Deliverance, my God, in the ass. Hallelujah. You may not need it because you have your bread buttered on both sides. You may not need it because every bill is paid and everything is going on all right in your house. But I came here on a wing and a prayer. Didn't even know how I got my airfare. And God sent me here to hear the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is, I'm part of the remnant. I'm getting ready to get the yoke off my back. sitting on your back today they got to get off get off it is commanded by the word of god it is spoken by the word of god now come on and thank him for deliverance now, this this oppressor this oppressor is ruthless this oppressor is aggressive this oppressor is going for the kill. He ain't playing. The devil ain't playing with you no more. He's coming for the juggler. You are here and he's starting something at home right now. You're sitting here praising God and some of you can't hardly praise him because you got a telephone call about something that happened last night. And you came in here so depressed. It is the enemy's job to put a weight on you. To keep you so loaded down. Tell somebody, loaded down, loaded. My God, some of you are loaded down with pride. Loaded down with a hairdo. Loaded down with a title. You need deliverance too. So important, sitting up here, like you somebody. You ain't nobody until God make you somebody. Come on here, loaded down. Loaded down. When you can't praise him, honey, you're loaded down. And the Bible says, that God spoke a word. Verse 27 and I'm finished. What's the word? The word is, and it shall come to what? Till somebody can't stay, it can't stay. I believe that God in his wisdom, tell somebody wisdom. I believe he brings you together in these services to do some miraculous, extraordinary, supernatural, outrageous, ridiculous things. My God, I mean, you got a touch in the bathroom, but he'll completely destroy some things right here in this meeting. I believe that it's a setup. Tell somebody it's a setup. Ah, he brought you here to totally break something. Oh, come on. You'll never, ever, 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 ever be the same again. God is getting ready to crush it. Come on, tell somebody I feel the anointing. Come on and praise him, church. My God, the answer to the higher. Come on, the anointing is in the house. I said the anointing is in the house. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him glory. It shall come to pass. That means whatever is on you, whatever load you're carrying, whatever is bearing down on you so that you don't have agility 
freedom, access. So you can't maneuver like you want to. So you can't do what God says do. Your spirit is broken. Your mind is broken. You're disenfranchised. You just go through the motion, but way down in your spirit, you're carrying around a ton in your spirit. God said, this word is for you. It shall come to pass. Oh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want the devil. I want the devil to hear you say, it shall come to pass. Come on, you got to say it one more time. Come on, one more time. It Come on and praise it. Come on. Hey! Hey, y'all all shivery and so. Come on, give them a clap off and give them a clap off. Something is happening in here right now, right now, right now, right now. It shall come to pass. What shall come to pass? In that day. What day? Tell somebody, I choose today, I choose today. Tell somebody, you can choose next week if you want to, but I'm going for today. I'm Come on, Come Come Tell somebody today, today, today. In the middle of the day. Usually, we wait for night service. But God decided to do it in the middle of the day. When the devil least expect, God said today, 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 right now, right now. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? His burden. Whose burden? The oppressor. That's all right, she's being delivered. Some of you should be acting like that right now. Maybe you come out of here free. Go ahead, God, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and lose her, come on, help, help. Come on and praise God. The yoke is being destroyed right now, come on. His burden, the oppressor's burden. I don't know who put it on you. I don't know who laid it on you. I don't know who cussed you out. I don't know who spoke some words to you that messed up your mind. I don't know who immobilized you. I don't know who intimidated you. I don't know who paralyzed you. But God said it's on your shoulder. You wear it. Even when you got a $200 dress on, you're still oppressed. Even with a new hairdo, you're still oppressed. Even when you try to dance the holy dance, you're still oppressed. But God said today, tell your neighbor today, I'm going to take it off you. Tell somebody it's coming off It's coming on. The word, ladies and gentlemen, the word burden means to be loaded down. And the imagery of this loaded down is like a woman who is in her last days of pregnancy. And you know when you're in your last days of pregnancy, your stomach is almost resting on your thigh. It is such a load that you can't hardly walk. Your whole body has been twisted to accommodate the heaviness of your stomach. Your back is sunken in. You almost become slew-footed to keep the weight in proper distribution. That's how heavy you are. And that's how some of us walk. We walk with a heaviness. Our posture, we look depressed, trying to front it, but we have a heaviness upon us almost like a woman desperately saying I don't care what you do cut it out let me push it out give me something to get rid of this baby as much as I want this baby but I'm tired of the Lord tell somebody it's heavy it's heavy it's heavy I just want to deliver I just want to deliver this thing is getting too heavy for me and the Bible said that he shall take it off it means to remove it it means to lift it so that you don't feel it anymore. And he's not just talking about helping you to bear it. 
He's not talking about making it easy for you to bear. He's talking about taking it off of you. Tell somebody, I want it off. I want it off. Oh, come on. I want to see you tell the devil it's coming off. It's, come on and tell him it's coming off. It's coming off. I will take it off your shoulders. It literally means the back, usually the yoke is placed on the back of a beast, an oxen, a donkey. But in the imagery, it means it's placed on the shoulder, right between, on the neck, between the two shoulder blades. And it literally means that the weight is borne down. And the intent is to keep you limited, to keep you in bondage, to keep you confined, to keep you controlled. <laughs> and I come against the spirit of control in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, somebody help me drive him out of here. of control even in the church we know how to control each other that's why some of you are in trouble today you get loose and then you get tied up again you get out of one thing and you go back in the same thing because you're under somebody's control but as I stand here I stand against that spirit you lie in wonder you shall not control God's people I rebuke you I curse you I come against your roots Come against your works in the name of oh, I wish I had a church to help me. Come on, spirit of control, spirit of control, spirit of control, spirit of control, spirit of control. Oh, I'm in your house now. I'm in your house. I'm in your house now. I'm in your house. Spirit of control. Come on and put your hands together. The devil got to back up. He's got to take the spirit off of you. Come on and let me hear your praise. Spirit of control is gone. Come on, got to say, got to say, got to say it. It's that hidden spirit. It's a hidden spirit. It's a hidden spirit. It hides up in the pew. It sits up in the pulpit. It runs the usher board. Come on, put your hands together. I got him on the run now. I got him on the run. Come on, I got him on the run. Come on, he's running out of here now. Come on and put your hands together. I've got to see you praise him. Show me the answer to the... Hallelujah! Go. The Bible says, I shall take it off your shoulders. I shall give you freedom. I shall give you movement. I shall give you agility. You don't have to walk around as if you got to genuflect. You can walk with confidence. And I shall, and his yoke, whose yoke? The oppressor, the manipulator, the liar, the person that you fear, the person that you, every time you see them, you get scared. The situation that has you crying. The people in your house that have you walking around as if you don't own the house, as if you ain't paying the mortgage. Come on here, the Lord said, I'm getting ready to take the yoke. Come on, where is the yoke? Around the neck. If the yoke is around the neck, you can't see to the right, you can't see to the left, and you can't see behind you. So if you're yoked, you have no vision. If you're tied up, you have no insight. If you're tied up, you have no perception. That's why you're going around in circles. But tell the devil, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Somebody's getting ready to get a vision in here. The yoke is getting ready to be taken off of your neck. The yoke, the yoke is a U-shaped, it's a U-shaped 
piece of iron or wood that encircles the neck or he yokes you up to somebody that ain't going nowhere. They usually yoke them to two animals because they want the two animals to plow the field, to walk in the same direction. They are yoked so that they can be used. <laughs> I want you to know why the devil oppresses so he could use you. Huh? If you're depressed, he can use you. If you're discouraged, he can use you. And then he yokes you up to people that with the same spirit so he can use the two of you and the two of you going nowhere. Tell somebody it's going to be over today. It's going to be over. I got to make a telephone call today. I'm going to tell so-and-so I can't be yoked to you no more. Hey, God help me somebody. Glory! from today, today, today. If you don't get loose from them, you're going to be oppressed the rest of your life. Tell somebody, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want, oh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to be free. God said I'm free. God said if I'm free, I'm free indeed. They put this around the neck and it is to impose, to overpower, to manipulate to use, to control people's actions, where they go, what they do, what they do with their money, who they talk to. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. You mean to tell me that the blood of Jesus set you free and you got somebody telling you where to go and who to talk to? The devil is a liar. Tell somebody I'm free today, I'm free. And I'm getting ready to get free. I'm getting ready to get free. And the Bible says, the yoke shall be. I'm almost finished now. I feel the winding up coming. <laughs> and the yoke shall be. Tell somebody shall be, shall be, shall be. Tell somebody not maybe, not perhaps. This ain't no gambling. We ain't in Las Vegas. We ain't trying no slot machine. This is a sure thing. Tell your neighbor, it's a sure thing. As sure as the devil did it, sure enough, God go on to it. Yes, yes, yes. As sure as I've been tied up, I'm getting ready to get loose. And the yoke. I don't care what's around your neck. I don't care who is around your neck. I don't care who got your home tied up, got your finance tied up. I don't care who is oppressing you. I don't care what note, what letter, what telephone call you got. I don't care what friend gossiping and lying. I don't care what it is that's got you so limited that you're afraid to go here. You're afraid to do this. Many of you, the Lord has told you to walk through an open door and you're so afraid of public opinion and so afraid of what people gonna say. Ah, it's ain't about people. It's about the purpose of God. It's about the name of God. It's about the integrity of God. God said so so what if they talk, you're free. So what if they gossip, you're free. So what if they talk about it, you're blessed. What do you want, the blessings, or you want to be tied up? Tell somebody, I feel my neck get ready to get loose here. I feel the yoke get ready to come off my neck. All these years, all these years, I've been living for somebody else. Now I'm getting ready to live for Jesus. Come on and praise him. Praise and church. Tell somebody I feel freedom. I feel, I feel freedom. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Many of us are yoked because we want an image. We're so concerned about images. We're concerned about fitting in certain categories. I tell saints all the time when I preach, don't fit me in nobody's category. I don't give the call me Reverend Evangelist Jackie, whatever you want to call me, low down so-and-so, that's all right. I'm free, honey. Can't do nothing to tie me. Your money can't hardly pay my rent. Can't put no food on my table. God's going to feed me anyhow. Ain't nothing you can do that can stop me. I'm free. My, I can look to the right. I can look to the left. I can see far ahead. I can. Come on and tell somebody, I'm free. 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 I'
touch somebody at the boat. I'm free. I want to hear the word. I want to hear the word. Say free. What are some of the yoke? The fact that you don't have enough money, home is broken up, I don't care what it is. It's been a yoke. You go so far in ministry and you can't penetrate. You go so far in business and you still can't make it. Something is holding you down. Something is limiting your movement. As far as you've gone, you could have gone further. Every time you go a little way, the devil try to pull you back. There's a yoke around your neck. And God said, and the yoke shall be. Tell your neighbor, shall be. As a matter of fact, it's getting loose right now. It's getting ready to fly off your neck right now. Ah, oh, God is getting ready to deliver you right now. It shall be what? I'm not talking about loose. It can be loose and still on you. as if it's still on there so in order for you to feel free again it got to be destroyed tell somebody I don't want it loose I want it crushed I don't even want to feel the sensation now some of you have been delivered from things but you still get the sensation you still get the flashbacks you still get the memory you know why something is not destroyed I want the memory destroyed. I want the sensation destroyed. I want the ugly bridges destroyed. I want everything that I used to feel destroyed. Tell somebody I feel it coming off. I feel it coming. It shall be destroyed. And the word destroyed there means God shall wind it so until it pops. He's going to put pressure to it so until it's got to break. It means he shall spoil it. Everything that came to spoil you, God says, I'm getting ready to spoil it. Anything that came to spoil your house, God says, I'm turning around now, getting ready to spoil the mess. He's sleeping in another woman's bed. God says, I'm getting ready to mess up their little bed thing. I'm getting ready to turn him around and send him home with a new taste in his mouth for you. Ah, I'm getting ready to mess up his little affair. Tell somebody, affair, affair. I just messed up affairs. Oh, y'all don't understand what's happening up here. God is getting ready to go to somebody's house and run your husband out of there. him back you're a liar you're a liar you're a liar it's not what you want God said I'm sending him back I'm sending him back sending him back tell somebody open the door open the door open the door I see him coming in coming in coming in got his suitcase with him come on I need a clap 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 I'm getting ready.
ready to shorten your children's sentence. Some boy is up for a 10 year stretch. God said he's coming home in three months. And the yoke shall be destroyed. Not because of being in church. Not because of singing on the choir. But because of the anointing. Come on and praise God for the anointing. Now, I'm going to close right here. I got some more, but the Spirit said close. What is the imagery that the Bible uses in study for anointing in this case? It is like an oxen that has gained too much weight. And the oxen's neck has gotten too fat. Start swelling. Tell somebody I feel a swelling come. So what's wrong with you? Anointing, honey, anointing. I'm so it's all up in my neck, honey. And when the oxen's neck, listen to me. When the oxen's neck, remember, the yoke is tied and fitted to suit the neck of the oxen. Two years ago, the oxen was lean and lanky and the yoke could fit tight and he could be kept in control. But he decided to get fat. Tell somebody I decided to get the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody I decided to read my Bible. Tell somebody I decided to hear God. And he did something to my neck. It made me fat. It made me full. For those of you who don't want God, and those of you who fool around, this yoke is gonna be on your neck even after this service. But for those of you who, has been, who have been seeking Him, a couple of years ago, the yoke was on your neck so tight, everybody knew you were in bondage, honey. They took one look at you and know you, you tied up, tied up. But then you got serious with God. Tell somebody I got serious. I decided that I didn't want to be tied up no more. I couldn't cut it off. I couldn't dress it off. I couldn't sing it off. So I decided to go after the Holy Ghost. I decided to let the Lord fill me up to the overflow. I decided that I wanted to be fat in Him. I decided I wanted His Word to dwell in me richly. And I didn't understand that when I was doing that, I was making my neck fat so that what used to fit couldn't fit anymore. And what used to control me couldn't control me anymore. And what used to make me cry couldn't cry anymore. And what used to discourage me couldn't discourage me anymore. And it started to pop. Somebody says, I hear a pop and I hear a pop and I hear. What's wrong with you? My neck is fat. My neck is fat. What's getting ready to happen? This yoke is coming off, it's coming off. I don't care how much they screw it, it can't stay off. How much they tighten it, it can't stay off. How much they lie on me, I've got something in my neck. It ain't a diamond necklace. It is not a new blouse, but it's the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. And when our neck got fat, the yoke popped. But then when it popped, the oxen had to shake it off. I've got the anointing in my neck, but I got to shake it off. I don't even want to look like I look anymore. I don't want nobody to think I'm in the same place that I was before. I don't want my face to look the way it looked before. So I'm gonna shake it off. Now this is the word of the Lord. The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. The oil comes to consecrate. The oil comes to heal. The oil comes to deliver. Kings were anointed. It is a sign of empowerment. 
One of the types of the Holy Spirit in the Bible is oil. And when the oil is poured on you, you're empowered, empowered. That means you're not weak. That means you cannot be controlled. And God sent the word in here and the Holy Ghost is like oil. It's dripping all over this auditorium. Your neck is swelling. Ah, God is now filling you up with his presence. And what used to fit comfortably, what used to sit there and couldn't move, is getting ready to come off your neck. You're going home and make some decisions that you thought you weren't bold enough to make. You're going home and talk to some people that you ran away from for years. You're going home and make some changes that you thought you could never make. What's wrong with you? My neck is too fat for this. I've outgrown this. I can't be controlled anymore. Now get ready. Tell your neighbor, get ready, get ready, get ready. Tell your neighbor, I need some room, I need some room. Come on, stretch out. You need to get in the eye. Come on, you're too slow. Move. Some of you need to come close, come close. My God, there's an anointing in the house. I don't know what you plan to do, but I plan to praise him. Come on, come, 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 come. Now, some of you are coming with all kinds of yokes. Don't worry about it, honey. Tell somebody it's all right, it's all right. Some of you are yoked up to some people that God gonna separate you from today, today, today. Tell somebody that's all right too, that's all right too. Tell somebody I wanna be free, I wanna be free, I wanna be free. Tell somebody I got to be free, I got to be free. God is getting ready to do something with me and I can't do it tied up, tied up. 